the program with us today is my colleague at Paul Television, uh, my brother, Coyote, I think you're welcome. We will be fielding questions alongside me as we proceed. And I want him to even throw the very first question. Once again, you're welcome, Mr. Ellis. Thank you. Yeah, there is this uh, as a vision that we are desperate to go back to yeah, that's why uh, that's what from you to constructed from a PDP to FDP. Your reaction please. Well, I thank God for the grace that God has given to me. And uh, anybody who knows me will know that Shegun can never be desperate for anything. God has given me the grace to be satisfied even with little. I became governor of a kitty state in my 50s. Now I'm in my 60s, more than 12 years after. Why should I be desperate over anything? And between then and now, so much water has passed through the bridge and I want to say that if I was desperate, if I was looking for anything, when the PDP made me an offer to come and be their national chairman, which is by all means greater than being the governor of the Kitty State, I would have fallen for it. I was made an offer by some governors. Go and find out. And I said, no. I wouldn't take it. The people who are saying that probably don't know Shegwoni. I've had so many options, I've had so many temptations along the line. I'm being propelled by principles. I am not their type who is looking for what to be, what to eat, you know, and so on. I am beyond that. But Your Excellency, there must be some few things you didn't quite do well and you were not able to complete, you know, especially when the concept you have to do after three years. Can you tell us some of the things you plan to do uh, if you get there again? Our manifesto is an unusual manifesto because you see uh, red the reds are what we have achieved that we believe needs to be built upon. The reds will show that we have come a long way, but there is still a lot to do. Uh, let me say this very, very clearly. I understand reasonably what the needs of development are. At this particular time that we are talking about, the same human development report rated us overall number 10 in human development index. If we are number 10 in human development index, out of 36 and we came from a lowly background of number 34 at best in statutory allocations <laughs> that means there's something we know how to do that we are doing whose results are showing i didn't come here for lack of what to do. I was an expatriate in Xerox and I worked for Xerox in a competitive environment in Kenya and East Africa sub-region. What was written about me still golden. So I knew I could do turn around in Xerox everywhere. Either Xerox in Nigeria or Xerox in Kenya, they called me turn around manager a manager who can turn things around positively. So if I'm turn around manager, I wanted to use that here. 
So, people who have never done anything successfully in their lives will now be saying, because I want to go back, it means I'm des desperate to do what? Well, apart from you, Your Excellency, we actually see some desperation in people who seem to want to pull you back and not allow you to get to that position. For instance, somebody said, and I quote, the journey to the SDP is a journey to nowhere. That's what some pessimists seem to say, that uh, what you have done is to feed on the carcasses of aggrieved political groups. And I said to them, well, America today is made of aggrieved Britons who drifted to that place and they make success of the of, the, of democracy. What do you think of these uh, views of these people? You see, unfortunately, politics is so destructive in this part of the world that people will want the worst things to say about you. And that's why a lot of people are running away from it. I am not going to run away from it. The urge to make things happen for our people far outshines that, far outweighs that. And I can tell you, I'm renewed in my motivation because what people are saying, how people are showing us support, how people are showing us kindness, how people are praying for us, show that the work we did really was appreciated. And if anybody has left 12 years and they are still talking about it, and he's not the only one, that is the grace of God. So I don't regard those as very important talk. I don't even regard it as sensible talk. So they can say anything. I want to serve my people once again. I don't need to be desperate to do it. I have put my services at cost and the people will decide whether they want it or they don't want it. Some people seem to know you better than even yourself. They say you don't trust the people that work with you. Again. They, 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 I have been a manager for so many years in different environments, different countries. If I don't trust the people that work with me as a manager, I should compel myself to change them and to continue to change until you get people that you can work with that you trust. So if I had a situation where I don't trust the people that I work, that I work with, you would have been seeing me continue to change, change hands and so on. This is not happening. You see, the people who say that are people of very low intellect, I'm sorry to say, because do they understand what it is to manage? Do they understand what trust is? That trust is like a contract. So they do not know the value of the words they are throwing around. And I'm not surprised. They did more than that when I was contesting for the first time. Lies, a lie a day. That's what we called it then. Lie, lies coming out of the terrain every day. But despite that, I defeated them very well. And uh, they went to court, they were able to get me out through the court. I am not, I am not bothered. But it showed clearly that they can only do it in the courts. Now, there's no way they can win. We don't have to deceive ourselves. They know. And they can't even find reasonable things to say about me that people of intellect will believe. Say somebody says he doesn't trust the people who are working with him. Why is he working with them? Is it I did foster on him and so on. <laughs>
Excellency, are you worried now that uh, there's a party in power also playing against you? Are you worried in any way that things can might be manipulated? No, I'm not worried. I've never worried about anything because, as far as I'm concerned, they will try. But you know the limit of their capabilities in anything. And we can always project that they will not go far. You heard some of these uh, wonderful programs, uh, which some of which have been uh, controverted also. That you have this micro finance scheme, which some people applaud uh, to create jobs for artisans, for traders, for jobless people, instead of driving a car around to make them have something useful. And yet some people went about criticizing that. I thought those were wonderful programs. What exactly went wrong here? Nothing went wrong. I left the I left the scene. The next government didn't think that it should continue. Um, micro credit was a revolving sum that when you put money there, the money should carry on, carry on, carry on people borrowing and returning. We didn't even know. The government did not make any statement about where the money went. Was it that everybody that took the one and a half billion liquid cash, one and a half billion, ran away with it, and then publish their names and prosecute them if there is a need? I believe that they know precisely that they are guilty somewhere. They are guilty somewhere. And we did microcredit. Quite a lot of people benefited and it turned their lives around. Those who did not, good luck to them. People are moving in groups joining the SDP. We are the newest of the parties, and we are already the largest in the state, by the grace of God. So, it's not, it's not rocket science. Well, I would say that SDP is becoming the real deal now. It's becoming the real deal. People know. And there is also this common say. They will, they will say it is not party, it is personality. Whatever that means. It's also a question mark on okay, some people's integrity and capability. I was coming to that also. Talking about integrity, let me ask you, how many governors in uh, Nigeria, past or present, has dropped their monthly security rules and said, well, I'm asked to leave the office with you guys and keep this for the next person coming after me. How many governors do you think can do that or has ever done that? Well, I know I did it. I won't talk about others, but I know I did it because it is the security vote of the governor of a Kitty State. If they said this is the security vote of Odushek Moni, well, I'm going, I will take it. But that is the security vote of the governor of a Kitty State, and somebody else was proclaimed. To be the next man on the 
so I left it for him. I have no regrets. That talks about integrity. Do you think that is uh, why people are now clamoring that to Polish economy must come back to it could, it could be part of it. It could be part of it. It is a total package. Integrity, productivity. Because you need integrity to manage productivity right. You need productivity to sustain integrity and create value out of it. Both were present. And productivity, let me tell you, integrity may not be what you pick up from school. It's what you pick up from home and what you school yourself about as values. Productivity is likely what you pick up from school. And of course, workplace environment. I'm proud of my background. I have a bachelor's in chemical engineering, and I had an MBA. Both of them in my 20s. And uh, if I want to count the number of management courses that I've attended in different countries of the world, they will go in legion. I worked in very competitive environments, and I got good results. That is what will create productivity. Integrity and productivity. Both of them are very important. But when people come from nowhere and they say they want to be governor, somebody who has been a spare parts dealer says he wants to be governor. You want him to do well when he has never been appraised as a short floor man, and is now supposed to preside over the appraisers of top guns, there was no way they would do better than their capability. We must not and we must never deceive ourselves again. It's not everybody that can occupy the seat of governor and give the state or the people good value. Lee Kiyo Yu, in his very, very popular book from Third World to First World, said you need good leaders to have good government. <laughs> Bad leaders who bring harm to their people. The leadership content is very important. That is the CV of the leader, not the CV that they hire people to write, but about what the leader is, what he has gone through in life. Then you will now add his values. That is the integrity content. And I want to say that if anybody believes seriously that Sheikh Moni does not have a requisite background for anything, to do anything, I'm not talking of technical issues, you can say, but conceptual issues and management, they should come and say it. We we know how we weigh, we know ourselves, that we are not talking down on people. It's a deliberate attitude. But when they talk like this, at times they provoke us to be able to see who is that talking. Where is it coming from? How much schooling did he go through? And even while in school, what did he read? What were his grades? To show that even what he claimed to read, he knew. 
we are, you see, we are not talking this way because we want to protect ourselves from sliding into arrogance. But when they talk this way, at times, they make me feel. There was a time in this state they said I was their job, that I didn't know how to use power. I have read so many books on power, books that I'm sure if they put me side by side with anybody who has ever been governor of this state, they will say I read less. And but the people will be saying that. Why not even the governors? Though? They will be people, some of who had never read up to five books in their life. Some of who do not even understand what power is. They will just talk. He doesn't know how to use power. And I'm always saying it. The powers of a governor are awesome. Anybody who wants to use everything there, or half of everything there, might be tending towards insanity. I don't use my own powers like that. They say I don't know how to use power. And I laughed, and I said, if any of these people went to school as long as I did, because I spent the entire period of my life from age four to my twenties in school, not out of school. If they went to school for as long as I did, they would have come across management education that would temper them to know that if you have that power, that is not the way to use it. And he let us say, uh, Your Excellency, if you get to the position of the, as a governor of the state, would you want to demonstrate to them so that they know you know how to use this power? <laughs> I will not. Rather, I will want to educate them. And I'm a teacher. I want to educate them to say, uh, like the the old adage, they will say, "Not all that glitters is gold." I would like to educate them to know that. We manage this state to the level that average life expectancy here was highest in Nigeria. We don't have usage. We don't have youth. But we are managing our healthcare delivery, the processes, in such a way that, yes, it translated to the best in Nigeria. What did they achieve? Let each of them come and say it in practical terms. What they actually achieve. If you constructed an overhead bridge, what did it translate to in the life of the people? <laughs> Thank you. 